All right, good morning, everyone. So what we're going to do today is, you know, our, our focus for the first week and a half is going to be naming compounds and working with the various rules. Now, before we get into any details in terms of far as, uh, you know, what ionic, covalent, and all that, the, the rules that go with each of those, I want to just kind of introduce the periodic table and get you acclimated to what you are going to be needing to know from it and how to use it so what we're going to do is we're going to, again we're going to look at the periodic table first and you can find this periodic table on canvas and i want to first uh, point out the fact that the main that, that the periodic table is broken up into two different groups you have the main group elements and then you have the b group so the main group elements are uh, groups 1a 2a 3a uh, all the way to 8a you can see that here where my mouse is pointing and then b group is is all the metals that are found in this middle region of the periodic table now that that leads me back to saying look here so when we talk about the elements in the periodic table so they, they are grouped in certain groups and they and they're arranged in a specific manner all right so now before i get into talking about that let's talk about the group names so each of these groups have their own name and the the first one we're going to look at is the one that you see here this is called the b group it's also known as the transition metals and the transition metals go from group 3b all the way over to 2b as you can see the way i have it sort of grouped with that red ink there on the page the the main group elements are again groups 1a through 8a and they have their own unique names so i have the names here all right, so group 1A, we're going to start on the left-hand side. It's the alkali metals. Group 2A is the alkaline earth metals. Group 3A is the boron family. 4A is the carbon family. Now, the nice thing about these two groups is that the names are based around the element that it starts with. Now, when you get to group 5A, which is starting with nitrogen, that is called the nictide family. 6a is chalcogen if you notice the first element in 6a it's oxygen and oxygen is if, if you do not have oxygen you're going to choke and so the word chalcogen just means to choke all right so if you lack of oxygen so it's it's nice that it works out like that but you know it's called chalcogen so c-h-a-l-c-o-g-e-n is how you spell that word all right, group 7A is called the halogens. We have probably heard of these at some point in time. Uh, chlorine is in pool water. That's what we use in pool water to help sterilize it. And then most people know 8A, which are the noble gases. All right, so those are the noble gases. Now, as, as we look at this arrangement, we see this bold line here that goes down this little staircase now this staircase separates the metals from the non-metals so if you're to the left of the staircase you're considered to be a metal if you are to the right of the staircase you're considered to be a non-metal i'm just going to abbreviate that as nm all right so now all of the highlighted that are pink the elements that are highlighted in pink here those are called the metalloids and i'll just write that out so you can see so metalloids so metalloids are the elements that are sort of half breeds they're, they have properties of metals and both properties of non-metals all right so that's your introduction to the periodic table so you first need to know where the metals are you need to know what the non-metals are and then you need to know what the groups names and and such are so the family names so so again groups families run up and down that's what we call it you can see that arrow that you see here and then the the elements that go left to right we call this a period slash row so you, you you'll need to know that the difference between a period versus a a family all right so again the period and rows run left to right uh, again types of elements metals non-metals metalloids and then you have the gases so the gases typically are found on the right hand side associated with the non-metals all right so so that's what i wanted to do first is just introduce you to the periodic table so that way you know what elements are which you know whether they're metal or non-metal and that's going to be really important when you get into 
ionic compounds. All right. So the next thing we're going to look at here are the the diatomic molecules, and and so a diatomic molecule consists of two atoms that are the same. The there are only seven diatomic molecules. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, and iodine. So these are the seven. You can see those pretty easily on the periodic table. So gonna, let's see here. I'm going to highlight this in a yellow color. So you can see the hydrogen here. And then if, if you look at the what I'm doing here, you'll see that it has the number seven. So these are the, so, so when we say diatomic, we don't write nitrogen as just N, we write nitrogen as N2. So hence the diatomic, having that subscript two there tells you that, that it is diatomic. So you can see here that I, this is how you would write the formula for those diatomic molecules. All right, so hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So again, you all you have to do there is just you know the names, know the elements names, and then how to write the formulas. In this case, all you have to do is memorize the fact that they all have subscript of two. Okay. Now the another thing that is we take it for granted because we do this so regularly. So if I were to let's say pick you and ask you what's the name of you, you're going to know it as uranium. All right. We we all have heard of uranium. Uh, Na is sodium, K is potassium, Ca is calcium, Li is lithium. We, we see that now. It's becoming much more important in terms of our lithium ion batteries, hybrid cars, electric vehicles, all different types of batteries are composed of lithium. In fact, Charlotte, south of Charlotte in Kings Mountain area, we have one of the largest reserves of lithium in North America. So you'll see that become a, a, a pretty important place in the near future. Some of you might even go and work there. Who knows? So, okay. So now, the, so that basically concludes the, the, the introduction to the periodic table. We, we, we understand, and you should understand, what a diatomic molecule is. Now, the next thing I want to do is just kind of throw out some notes here for you. All right, you will see this in the in the next video in terms of ionic compounds, but I want to just put some notes on the board for you so you can jot these down. So ionic compounds uh, are ionic compounds that form between metals and nonmetals. Okay, the the bond that forms occur because the metal transfers electrons to the nonmetal. So the the term ionic itself is important to understand. And and when I write the word ion. All right, so the, the word ion here uh, is referencing the fact that the, the, the metal lost its electron because it transferred it to the nonmetal. So, so metals are going to have positive charges and nonmetals are going to have negative charges. You can see that in that statement where it says when the electron transfers, it creates a positive charge on the metal, which we call the cation, and a negative charge on the nonmetal, which is called the anion and this this creates an ion bond and so what you need to make sure you are comfortable with is knowing what an ion is specifically and how that relates back to the ionic bond it forms now there are three different groups that we're going to look at there are binary there are tertiary and then there are transition metals all right again i have a video specific for ionic compounds already posted on canvas and so what I want you to do is go through those videos and start working on understanding what the, the different types of ionic compounds exist and how we use those to, to name, et cetera. All right. Uh, you will see this mountain here. I'm not, I don't want to spend a lot of time, but I'm just going to kind of breeze through some of the notes that I have here so you can see what you're going to be working with. So, but like for now, I just wanted to introduce the periodic table so that way you you have a, a basic understanding of what the periodic table is, how it's arranged, and how that's going to relate to what we do in terms of uh, naming compounds, writing formulas. And again, that will be shown in the next video. So for now, I wanted to just introduce the periodic table to you guys 
So your next step will be to fill out in the blank periodic table with the elements name and symbol. You will submit that onto Canvas for a grade and then you will be taking the periodic table elements quiz later this week. And so that means that you're going to need to start memorizing the elements on the periodic table. And so the elements that you'll want to start working on memorizing are really essentially the, the, the ones that you find in the top more portion of the periodic table. Now I can't quiz you on every single element, but you know, you need to make sure you know the main ones, which are like hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, sodium, magnesium, calcium, potassium, etc. So the transition metals, you will know a few of them, uh, but you know, you're going to know the main group elements predominantly. All right. So, so again, there are a few of the transition metals and I go over those in the in the next video with the ionic compounds. So for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there. So if you guys have any questions, make sure you send me an email, and then on top of it, make sure you are completing your discussion assignments that are found on Canvas. All right, thanks, y'all.